Well, uh, dear innovators, dear creative minds, dear connectors, uh, but most importantly, uh, dear Steffi, looking at this building and at this crowd, this feels so much better than two years ago, where the two of us were sitting in a little green room in front of a camera. This is great, and Florian, thank you for having us here. This is, this is great. Thank you, thank you. Well, we meet here under the banner of Beyond Now, and for a CEO of a car company, that means thinking about the future. And that means that you have to decide where you go with the flow, that's the easy part, but because there are so many flows that you almost get dizzy, more important is where you do not go with the flow. And that is my topic for today. And mobility, as you all know, is an, also an emotional topic. And I would like to describe it in a BMW manner. It's only in three words, digital, electric, and circular. BMW, and we just heard from the state minister, this is a technology hub here in Munich and its surroundings. Alone, BMW employs more than 8,000 IT engineers around Munich. And um, if I go to the topic already mentioned, here we go. Um, we try to describe what do we do with IT. And we try to put it into a point by creating um, a vision vehicle in the digital sphere, and we call it D, digital emotional experience. And we presented it, uh, as Steffi just told you, last week in Las Vegas. And our core message was digital leadership in the car is not about the biggest screens and is not about uh, who writes the most lines of code and it's definitely not who has the most features in the car. That's not the point. The point is who creates the best emotional experience. And that is what this D-car, let's call it like that, D-car is all about. And Believe it or not, many of the features we showed there, you will see on the road in a little more than two years with our next generation of cars. We call that Neue Klasse. We use that German word even in English, the Neue Klasse, which will hit the road in 2025. So what, what do we also do? Digital is clear. The next big topic is circular. I think we are going into a completely new industrial era for sustainability reasons, but even more so for economic reasons, that we don't go into a recycling era, we go into a reuse era, which is a completely different thing. And mainly because resources on this planet are simply limited, and we have to, considering that we exploit 100 billion tons, 100 billion tons of raw materials every year from the planet. So there must be, there must be a way to reuse um, that yearly investment. So that was our vision car, uh, the, the BMW iVision Circular, which we presented to the world some one and a half years ago. This is the way we consider it uh, of utmost importance. The next topic is you might think you are the most sustainable company in the world if you just go all electric and the problem is solved. Not true. Who of you knows the latest Morgan Stanley climate index? Most of you probably don't know because this is not publicly acknowledged. They look at organizations like us and they say with, with, what, with your strategy are you in line to the 1.5 degree target or not. And they, of course, look at emissions, but they also look at scope one and scope two and scope three upstream and downstream. And they put that together in the model and they give you a temperature figure. And believe it or not, not every car company who says, I go all electric, comes even close to two degrees. BMW stands currently without committing that we end the combustion engine at 1.6 degrees. Why is that? It's not intuitive. Because you have to manage all scopes, inclusive, most importantly, the supply chains upstream. 
This is the most important power. If you want to be a sustainable company, this is the most important power, and that is documented by the Morgan Stanley Climate Index. Now, of course, electromobility, everyone does it, BMW does it. I think we are on a very good way here, and that's possibly for now the most important growth area for the automotive industry. If you are not in it, you have a, um, a bleak future. I think so much is clear. But have you tried to stand on one leg for a long time? Have you tried that personally? You know, we're getting it. This is a dangerous thing. In a fastly moving world, which is most endangered by critical raw materials, that might be for a company a very dangerous thing. So we think, when we think about the future, we want to have more than one leg. We would like to have at least three, four, or even possibly um, five legs. And that is where hydrogen, that is where hydrogen comes into play. And I will try to explain this in all briefness why we come to that conclusion, why hydrogen is one of the future legs for individual mobility. First of all, a hydrogen car is an electric car. So it's not something completely new. You just exchange a large battery against a smaller battery and a hydrogen tank and a fuel cell. So the architecture is already there. And the biggest advantage of hydrogen is it can be stored and you're not depending on actual um, energy production in that very second where you charge the battery. Also, with battery cells, we are already seeing competition for resources, which has just begun. What you hear now is just the beginning of a fierce battle on resources. And I don't want to talk about regional dependencies. Um, I don't want to talk too deep about cost increases. Everyone thinks costs are going down now. No. If something is scarce, and it will be scarce for the next 15 years, it will become more expensive. It's not intuitive, but this is exactly what is happening right now. And resilience, and we won't like to be a resilient company, means you have to have flexibility and variety. And in a battery car, you need about 10% of all raw materials of a car is only in the battery. So the window for opportunity is now for hydrogen. And if you want to have a look at it, we have the car standing outside and we have a, we have a model how it looks like also here down in the hall. And BMW is, an, is a global company. Almost all region, and that's a fairly new trend, all regions in the world, the world are investing heavily into hydrogen. Not for cars, by the way, but that's not the point here. Into hydrogen and wherever possible, even into green hydrogen. There is no region in the world who has not discovered the advantages of hydrogen. And why is that also important for individual mobility? If you want to get away from emission technologies, like a combustion engine, you need a, di a different setup of infrastructure. And the problem with infrastructures is the bigger they get at the end, they become exponentially expensive. So that the first 50% is easy, the second 50% is the tough part. And you see here, and that is an, an official study, when you come into close to 70, 80% um, market average of electric cars, the infrastructure becomes prohibitively expensive. And there, also not very intuitive, if you have two infrastructures at the end, in the final end game, the cheaper solution, not the more expensive solution. So that is why we advocate for building up not only a charging infrastructure, which, by the way, is only available for cars, but a hydrogen infrastructure where every industry member, whether it's trucks, airplanes, buildings, um, ships, and also, of course, individual cars can profit from. That is our take here. And why is that double way? Let's call it a double way interesting. For electric cars, the best thing is you have green energy and the wind is blowing, the sun is shining, and you pump into your car. This is the most perfect solution you can ever imagine. This is the upper uh, branch here. But as you know, this is not always the case. 
energy is not always green. It's sometimes brown, blue, any color, sometimes even uh, pitch black. And then hydrogen comes into play because it can be stored. And it can be created on a completely different place where it's actually used. That is the big advantage of hydrogen. And that is true of whether you put it into ships and planes or at the end into a car. That is why hydrogen is one of the elements on our transition into green energy. Greener, faster, cheaper. And as you see here, this is a complementing strategy. This is not either or. By the way, if you want to be resilient, either or questions or e even worse, either, either or answers are the most dangerous thing. And this picture depicts that you can do both without betting the farm on one technology. For us, the future has a long history. We started more, more than 17 years ago in experimenting, researching, developing with hydrogen. It was at, the, at that time still hydrogen uh, in a combustion engine. We forfeited that way. So today we're uh, deliberately on a fuel cell strategy. And we, do, we don't do that alone. Partnering is the name of the game. We partner with Toyota about the te fuel cell technology. And not only since yesterday, we started with that uh, more than eight years ago. And the car you see outside here, you can do with an iX5 hydrogen. You can do almost anything besides driving through a small door. That is why the car is outside and not inside here. But have a look at it. It's an exciting, exciting car. And also, if you want to have a look at the technology itself, there's also an exhibit out there to see that it's uh, complex, but it's easy to do if you're already on the electric field of mobility. So it's all not that difficult. There is a very short movie about that this is not only about developing cars, it's, this is also about completing the whole um, industrial chain about uh, production. This is here in Munich talking about technology hubs. This is a production of fuel cells here in Munich right in front of the door of this beautiful building here. And that is the production cycle for 40 cars we are currently producing for early use in the field out there to, to gather um, customer experience here. So also that is possible not only in California or Japan or Korea, that is happening right here in Munich. So to, to, to end this, we think when you talk about sustainability, you must take a holistic perspective. And not only the main flow is not always the only flow for such a complex industry we are living in. So this is our take. There's huge potential in green hydrogen and technology is teamwork and specifically decarbonization is teamwork. Thank you very much for your attention.